In this world I've tried to stay everything I have to Christian, and we're so privileged for the Lord to show us how, teach us how, give us know-how, give us understanding, glory to God, whoa, glory to God, how to be a Christian in this world, it's wonderful, we are helped and we are blessed, glory to God, we're going to go to prayer now and see what the Lord has for us, and uh, see what He's going to do for everybody, we're going to ask Him, see what He'll do, what do you think God will do, Sister Barbara, well, he saved you girls? Yes, he will. He will. Counting on it. Amen. She's counting on it. Hallelujah. So you request prayer for him, don't yes, you? Amen. Glory to God. I, Sister Rita needs prayer tonight. Uh, Brother Stephen said she took a nap and woke up with her cough a little worse. So let's, or worse cough. I don't know how little or much. But she does need us to pray because I want her to be able to keep coming. You know, I don't want her to have to be isolated in the house for worry that she gets sick. If y'all just pray that God would heal her. Amen. Okay, somebody else. Oh no. Bless her hearts are both crying. Lord, help them right now, Jesus. Help them, Lord. Feel your touch. Somebody else got a prayer request. Lady, glory I mean. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Positive. We had a combined over 2,100 people just on Sunday.
Saturday and Sunday come through. So that's mm -hmm. a blessing, definitely. But and they don't start on Sunday till after church, do they? Right. Right. Sir? They start yeah. at noon. At noon, yeah. So that's that's a blessing. So they're not right. trying to take the place of church in no, anybody's right. life. No, and they that, stop at five o'clock. That is that is really a, bl a blessing, mm -hmm. and it only lasts like a month, a month, or what? It's about two months. Two months. Two months. Eight or nine weeks. Eight or nine weeks. Okay. Harvest holler. <coughs> yeah, it's harvest holler, and it's they're a, they're a, a blessed family. Yes. It's very nice. Somebody else. Sister Linda. Um, Angela had texted me this morning and I didn't see it until this afternoon. Um, Renee's mother, Lynn, fell and she's broken some ribs. Oh no. So they asked okay. that we remember her. Remember Sister Lynn. She's gotten saved and she's doing very well as far as the Lord's concerned. Just pray for her body that the Lord will heal her. Somebody else. Yeah, Maya. Are you all right now, honey? Remember, you're asking for a prayer request, so you say, please pray. Please. Pray. Please pray for my mommy. Amani, yes. For both of you that not bump heads. <laughs> all right. <coughs> Anybody else got a prayer request? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, I'd like for y'all to remember the Miller family losing Judy. Um, pray for all of Highland City uh, that the Lord would give the people a desire to come to church, a desire to be saved. Lots of, I think, several people from Highland City watch us. So pray for them, and then remember Aaron uh, that has been coming, and. Um, all the other people in Highland City that the Lord really wants to save, I know He does. Remember Trevor and Shelby Esposito. Okay. Also remember uh, Justin and Blake and um, Kendall that put, it, put our Arctic freezing air conditioner in. <laughs> if you saw, if you could save the congregation, you'd see sweaters <laughs> in sunny Florida. But it is cool in here, and we're having to get used to it. So sound also, yeah. sound is different, and so you have to get used to the sound. Everybody in here, just be patient, and also out there, we'll try to get it balanced out yes. where it's a good here and a good out there. Yeah. Hallelujah! Somebody else tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Please remember um, a man named Mark with a C. Remember um, Cindy and Monty. Remember Cherie. Remember Heidi. Um, I need healing. Just pray that the Lord would help us remember all the people that we were, uh, our, all of our friends and people we were around um, at the wedding we were at this past weekend. Just pray that the Lord lets them find the anointing and the touch from Jesus they really want. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I pray for, for my friend Amanda. Well, I'm requesting prayer for her Amanda. that night. That night. Um, an answer came for her medication. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. She well, knew it. She didn't pray the Lord. that the Lord Yeah, I let her know we prayed. She mm -hmm. said that it, uh, an answer came that night. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's done so many things like that. We've prayed and he's moved. And thank God for it. We're still believing that he's going to completely deliver Sister Rita. Pray for all of her family. That God would especially remember um, Kenton because every time the Lord, when I walk with him, the Lord blesses him every time. And he, I believe he's really hungry. You know, if he can slip on through those teenager years where he's not worried about what anybody thinks and just lets God have his way, God will help him. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Remember David, his family, yes. and their family. Yes. Chip too has yeah. Chip's back doing. Mm -hmm. I assume fine. He's been doing everything, everything else, <laughs> like he always does. Okay, pray for Chip to be saved, and oh, um, Brother Henson, Sister Henson tonight. That God bless them. Anything else? 
Amen. Let's go to prayer and believe the Lord.
Hallelujah. What's it like up there with him there? Oh, hallelujah. It has to be different. It has to be better. Oh, it has to be something, doesn't it? Hallelujah. When you think of your loved ones, your grandmother, it's up there. You think of what a great Christian she was. Hallelujah. It has to be better when somebody gets up there that's got a real love and a real strong victory. Glory to God. Really loves Jesus and really has given their whole lives to him. It has to be a better place, doesn't it? When they talk about a better place, they, they're, they're saying a better place than this. But it even gets better in heaven. I believe every saint that goes makes heaven better. Glory to God. I, I know. I know. It's better there because Michael's there. I know it. <laughs> oh. Glory to God. Thank God. For
can't feel my fingers anyway. <laughs> so, to me, this is like tropical. This is awesome. <laughs> hey, Black.
you feel like he is. He is. And uh, I just appreciate the Lord for that. I appreciate him for him touching me and helping me. 
I appreciate him that every time that we need him, he is there. And I appreciate him for his help. Well, I thought I knew.
beautiful. Hallelujah, because it's true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to tell him right now. Tell him, I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need you every day. I need you tonight. I need you, Savior. Oh, glory to God. I need you. I need you, Savior. Hallelujah. I don't know what to do with myself. I need you. You to show me what to do with myself. Show me what I can do with myself. Help me, Jesus. Oh, be with me, Savior. Glory to God. His disciples, hallelujah, they didn't know which hand was up most of the time, did they? <laughs> they follow him and they try to figure it out. They didn't couldn't figure it out. But he was teaching them all along. Because they did have to go off on their own after but not really because he was with them he said he, he would I'll not leave you comfortless I'll come to you I'll not leave you comfortless hallelujah I'm telling you Jesus knows that we don't like to be alone he knows that we need his comfort we need his being with us and he will be with us he said thank you Jesus we invite you Lord we invite you into our lives. Be with us, Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So thankful. Praise God. You know, sometimes a song can take you places you didn't know you wanted to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. They can. A song can do that for you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to uh, read in chapter 58 of Isaiah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all can just keep your seat because I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the, the chapter. And we're going to... It's got some wonderful things in it. Hallelujah. It says, Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in reproaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free? and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Praise God. I will just talk, stop right there and talk just a minute about what he's saying here. He wants to... Isaiah is trying to get through to a people that believe that they know God, believe that they are pleasing in God's sight, but Isaiah is telling them you're not. You're not pleasing in God's sight. You're doing all kinds of um, things that are not pleasing in His sight, and you're expecting Him to accept you the way you are. But God wanted them to understand what it was to really seek God 
what it was to really fast and pray and seek His face. And what the reason for you to do it wasn't to make your voice to be heard on high. It wasn't to smite with a fist of wickedness. It wasn't to fast for strife and debate. It wasn't for any of that. It was to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. It was to deal your bread to the hungry and that you bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. You cover the naked and hide not yet thyself from thine own flesh. So God wanted people to begin to see what things were acceptable in His sight that would make their fast mean something to Him. And then He goes on, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward, rearward, for your protection. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. In other words, if you start talking true things, start being real. Start being what God wants you to be. If you'll do that, he'll answer you when you cry to him. If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. We'll stop right there, because the other part is talking about keeping the Sabbath, and the Lord has given us understanding, Jesus has given us understanding that he is Lord of the Sabbath. And we are not striving to keep the Sabbath as the Jews did, though we are trying to keep ourselves holy in every day. Being a holy, let every day be a holy day. So I'm going to just go from there to, the, to what I wanted to talk to you tonight about. I want to talk to you tonight about what these last few verses said. When, when we begin to do what's pleasing in the Lord's sight, when we begin to live like He wants us to live, then He said, Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and He shall say, Here I am. It's not a mystery about how can you get a hold of God. It's not a mystery. You start living your life in the way the Lord wants you to live it. Your, your life will become connected to Him in a way it's not been connected. You will actually begin to walk in His presence and be with Him. And He said, If you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and the darkness be as the noonday. So what light that you uh, have desired, what light of the Lord that you have wanted, that you have been hungry for, it's time for you to come to the place where you seek God with your whole heart. Ask Him, what's the matter with me? Why can't I get close to you? Why can't I feel close to you? What's wrong with me? And let Him show you. Let Him help you. Let Him uh, help you to understand what's, what is the matter. And then once you know what it is, just take that away and get rid of that. Get rid of the things that you're doing that's not pleasing in the Lord's sight. I know Him well enough to know that if He thinks some, I'm doing something wrong, He'll lead me right to that place in the Bible and let me see it. He'll open my eyes to, where, to what I'm doing that He's not pleased with. He'll show me. And he said, the Lord, And the Lord shall guide thee continually. 
When you begin to ask for that light and ask for your darkness to be as the noonday, for the light to shine on your path, when you begin to de desire that, the Bible says, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. The Bible talks about the Holy Ghost and He is the one that guides us into all truth. He's going to help us to understand what the truth is. God doesn't want a, a bunch of people that say they know God but they don't live by His Word. God doesn't want that. He wants you to live pleasing in His sight. And He's trying to tell, his, tell us in this chapter what is pleasing in His sight. When you begin to realize that your life is not your own, that you belong to the Lord, and when you begin to care about the others around you, you know, this life is short, isn't it, Brother Don? And there are a lot of lost people around us. A lot of lost people. And if we live only for ourselves, you know, if all we want is a relationship with God that makes us make sure we go to heaven, and we don't care about anybody else. If that's the way it is, we're not going to please God like that. And this is what he's saying. When you fast, you fast for debate. You fast for strife. You fast with the fist to strike with the fist of wickedness. You're just fasting to get your way with God. Instead of caring about what's going on in this world and asking Him for help. To see people... Get right with God and be pleasing in the Lord's sight. Hallelujah. Have you ever just felt fallen on your face and begged God to save people? I mean, sought Him earnestly. Please, Lord, don't let my neighbors go to hell. Don't let the people around me go to hell. Don't let my old classmates go to hell. Please, Lord, do something to help us. And you feel that way down deep in your heart. And you feel like you could, you could just die if He doesn't help you. If He doesn't do something to help you. That's the kind of fast. That's the kind of prayer that God's looking for. That's it, the kind of living He's looking for. Where you, hallelujah, He said, When you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul. Oh, if I could just help. You know, I feel that way. If I could just help somebody receive the Holy Ghost. If I could just show them how. If I could just somehow, when I pray for them, that connection would be made and they would just be filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, that is a, a desire to have. You know, you, you can't just say, God, look, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Everything's fine. No, everything's not fine until everybody is filled with the Holy Ghost. Every, not, everything's not fine yet. And we're living in this world where everything is not fine. And we have to seek God for help. And that's what he said. He wanted us to do that. And then he said, your light will rise in obscurity and your darkness will be as the noonday. You know, that's, Lee was shocked by the way the Lord used her. Well, you've been, have you been, uh, Lee, have you been drawing out your soul to the hungry? Have you been satisfying the afflicted soul? Have you been doing that? Yes, you've been doing that. I mean, you, you've been called on to do that. And so you have done it. And that's why this light is coming. And this, this uh, noonday sun is rising in your life. The Bible says for that, the day star to arise in your heart. And Jesus wants to live in our hearts. And He wants us to do the same kind of things He did back there when He lived on this earth. He wants to do those things through us. And He said, And the Lord shall guide thee continually. You don't know what to do with yourself. But God will guide you where you suddenly you're doing something that you really wanted to do and didn't know how to get to, to the place to do it, but there you are doing it. Because God has guided you into it. God has guided you out of your own uh, selfish living into living in the way He wants you to live. He'll guide you continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. Hallelujah. None of us want to be fat, but we want our bones to be fat, don't we? Fat means that they are strong. It means that they are not all uh, crippled and not where they can't move. You know, they're real lubricated. They're able to move. You're able to do something. 
You're not all crippled up. Make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose fail, waters fail not. You're not all dried up and dried out. You know, we've got this chair in here for Sister Rita. At home, we call it the ruination chair. Because if you sit in it, you don't want to do anything but sit in that chair. It's so comfortable. Hallelujah. But, no problem. I sat down in it once in this, in this church service. There wasn't a problem of me wanting to stay in it. You know? There wasn't a problem because I, was, I feel like a watered garden. When I go out and water my garden, those, those plants, they may be out all in the sun and they may be all drooped and, and withered and feel, you know, you look like they're about to die and then I'll pray, spray some water on them and then I'll go out there and look and they're all bright and I'm doing just fine now. You know, because <laughs> that water makes a difference. And that's the way it is about God. He said He'll guide you continu continually. When you begin to live for Him and live like He wants you to live, you'll be like a watered garden. You'll, you're, you'll be like a spring of water whose waters fail not. It's coming. You know, every day you can look for the waters of the... Hallelujah! The Spirit of the Lord moving through you. You can look for it. It's going to happen. Today I was listening to our service that we had this morning. And I don't know that I shouted as hard in this service as I did when I listened to it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. I suddenly got a shout all over me. Hallelujah. Why? Because God was not letting the waters fail. Right. He wasn't letting me dry up. Right. He wasn't letting me get to where I didn't feel anything. Right. He was letting me feel the, pure, the spirit and power of God. And you will do some shouting because you'll feel that. God wants you to feel that. That's why He sent it to you. That's why He gave you the uh, thought to listen to our services. And, I mean, we are not dried up. We are not dead. We are like a watered garden. And we, we don't have the waters failing us. Hallelujah. Brother Michael and I pastored this church for over 30 years. And I can say, I don't remember one service that God wasn't here with us. That's amazing, isn't it? Not one service. that We came in here and we felt all dried up and dead and there wasn't nothing good happening. Oh no. The Lord has been here. He made fat our bones. He satisfied our soul in drought. We had lots of times of drought. We did. But He still satisfied our soul. And we were like a, a spring of water whose waters fail not. And then listen to verse 12. And they shall be of they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Hallelujah. People had just about abandoned the holiness standard of living. They have just about abandoned it. There's people that believe in it that won't do it. They'll tell you. Oh, my grandmother, she would never wear anything but skirts. She'd never wear pants. You know? But they don't, they haven't done it. They haven't, because of the modern movement, they haven't lived that way too. You know, their preachers have told them it's all right. Their uh, Sunday school teachers have told them it's all right. To modernize. It's all right to get you a necklace. It's all right to get you a ring. It's all right to, to uh, you know, style your hair like modern people style their hair. It's all right to, to uh, go to the movies now. It's all right to have a little drink every now and then. It's all right with your food. You can have some wine with your food. It's all right. They'll go on and on and on about how it's all right. And the people that are, uh, they're saying it's all right to are going, well, why wouldn't my granny do that? My granny didn't want to do that. Boy, she, she could pray. Boy, she lived. She lived it. Why didn't my granny want to do that? Why didn't she think it was all right? Well, I guess times have just changed. And go on with the way the world is. And those are those waste places. You take this yard right out here and you don't do a thing to it. 
You don't mow it. You don't weed it. You don't do a thing to it. And when you come by here in about a year, you're going to see something pitiful. It's going to be pitiful. It's going to be what you call a waste place. Nobody's done anything to it. The grass has all grown all over it. The weeds have all grown up. You know, even some kind of different trees might have sprouted up in it, and it's just overgrown, and there's, it doesn't look like any place that anybody could use anymore. And that's the way it is about uh, God's ways, His, His, the way He has taught people to live. And they have neglected them so much that in their families, they are waste places. They are waste places. Because in their families, only Granny used to live like that. And that is a waste place. And But it says, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. They that shall be of thee, like your children, your grandchildren, your, the members of your church, your friends, people that are knowing you and part of you, they will build the old waste places. They'll look and say, you know, Sister Linda, that yard needs to be mowed. Don't you have any sense? That looks horrible. You should be doing something about that. Oh, yeah? Well, okay, let's do it. Pretty soon we mowed it up. We get it all neat and nice, and then we decided we're going we're gonna to use it for a certain thing. It's going to be good. We're going to build the old waste places. And God has taught us the whole world may be going modern. The whole church world may be going modern. And they may be letting the places of holiness, God's word, God's ways, be waste places. But God said, I'll let you be somebody that builds the waste places. And he said, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in. Hallelujah. In other words, God has not forgotten. God has not forgotten Granny. God has not forgotten her faithfulness. God has not forgotten her prayers. God has not forgotten her, her sanctification. God has not forgotten how she had loved him and, and prayed for her family and wanted her family to know the truth and live by the truth. He has not forgotten. And he's looking for somebody that's willing to raise up the foundations of many generations. Oh, hallelujah. You just think about it. You think about how uh, the frontier women and the women in the, in the years before America was settled, you'd ne they'd be out there uh, working around the, the covered wagons and they'd be in a skirt. Right? A long skirt. And they'd be winding their hair up and putting it in a bun. And I mean, <laughs> they're living holiness and they're not even holiness people. They're just People of this, uh, that generation that knew it was right, knew it was what was God, what was right in the sight of the Lord, and all the people around them expected them to live that way and not paint and not do all the things that the women in the dance halls did. They knew. It didn't even take them knowing about God to know that. That was just part of our heritage. And he said, thou, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. You, because you're faithful, because you want to do what God wants you to do, he'll raise you up to raise up the foundations of many generations. And you're going to be called the repairer of the breach. What is the breach? The breach is a tearing down, isn't it? It's where something gets broken. Where the walls come down. 
You know, Nehemiah, he was working on the wall of Jerusalem and the, his adversaries wanted him to come down and quit working on that wall. You quit working on that wall. They didn't want Jerusalem to be walled up again because they didn't want the Jews to have any kind of uh, protection from them. They wanted to tear them down. They'd already torn the wall down when he started building it back up. They didn't want it built back up. But God protected them and let them build it. Hallelujah. He protected them and let them raise that wall up. Praise God. They were a restorer of the breach. And we are restorers of the breach. They tried to tear the wall of righteousness and holy living down. They tried to say, it's all right. God accepts you. It's no problem for you to live just as close to the world, to the world as you want to because you're going to be uh, somebody that they'll listen to. Yeah, they'll listen to you teaching them wrong things. That's, a, that's no good. That's no good. He wants us he said we would be, Sister Annie, we would be the repairer of the breach. The restorer of paths to dwell in. It's right. It's right to live by God's word. It's right to come out from the world and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. It's right. It's right. Hallelujah. To keep the traditions that you have been taught. The Bible tells you to do that. When Granny showed you the right, right way to live, she was being serious with you. She was showing you the truth because she loved your soul. And I'm being serious with you too. I'm showing you the truth because I love your soul. He said you'd be the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. <clears throat> God wants us to dwell in His Word. He said if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. That's what Jesus said. If you'll abide in my word. This is his word. And I turn over to the New Testament and that's what he says. Abide in my word. Live in it. You go home and you throw out all those clothes that are not fit for a godly person to wear. You go home and you throw out those books that are not fit for a godly person to read. Or you... Turn off those apps that a godly person shouldn't be having anything to do with. I don't even know how to talk about that very much because I'm not savvy on that kind of thing. But I'll tell you, a lot of people are doing things on the phone that if their pastor knew about it, they'd be ashamed. And they know that God knows about it. And it's time. It's time for you to dwell in the paths that God wants you to dwell in. Just live in them. I mean, I'm saying try it. Try it. And see if the light doesn't start coming on. See if the sun, the day star doesn't start arising in your heart. Hallelujah. Try it and see if that that you have felt so withered and drawn and can't quite live through the day because you're not watered, try it and see if the water doesn't start coming to your soul and you start growing and living right and doing right. Try it and see if you don't begin to feel like you've got some life in you, some spiritual life. Hallelujah. He wants you... Hallelujah to listen to me tonight. He wants you to learn to be that restorer of paths to dwell in. 
I feel that way about myself. I feel like I'm a restorer of paths to dwell in. Yes, yes, those paths, the weeds have grown over them. Yes, they're in a big mess. You can't even hardly tell where the path is anymore because nobody walks that way. And I come and I say, wait a minute. Come here, Brother Jose, bring your machete. We're going to cut through that. We're going to get back on that path. That's the right one. And we're going to walk on that path. Come on, Bill, help me. Help me to get through that path. We're going to do it. We're going to make that a new path, which is really an old path. We're going to make it a new path for people to walk and to people to have the victory in Jesus. And we're going to let them learn that they, the old paths, hallelujah, is some place to seek for. Seek the old paths. What Granny knew, you don't know. But you need to know. Because you're getting to be a granny yourself. And your grandchildren, they mean more to you than anybody in this world. Don't they? Your grandchildren are precious. And they don't have a granny to tell them the truth. All they can say is, well, it's, I guess it's all right. I guess that's all right. Those one, those grannies that really love the Lord would say, now, son, you know that ain't pleasing to the Lord. I'll show it to you in the Bible if you want me to. But it's not pleasing to the Lord and you shouldn't do it. Because they loved you that much. Hallelujah. Okay. God wants to change some of the course of your lives. Emily, I want you to come to the piano. God wants you to desire Him more than you desire your own ways. Hallelujah. I don't read one of those new versions. I read the authorized Bible. And if you look around you, you can know why. Because as they change the Bible, they change their standard of living. If they'd hold on to the true Word of God, they could find the old paths. But you know, in every other Bible, there is no Holy Ghost. There isn't. Look for Holy Ghost in the NIV. Look for Holy Ghost in the NASB. Look for Holy Ghost in the New LT, New Living Translation. Look for a Holy Ghost. Find him. He's not there. This is the only Bible the Holy Ghost is in. If you're going to find those old paths, you're going to have to look in the Holy Bible. You're going to have to be willing to say, the world can go the way it wants to go, but I'm going to find that path. I'm going to find that path that has been obliterated almost, and I'm going to walk on that path. And God is going to let my light spring forth, and God is going to let me be a restorer of the paths to dwell in, God is going to let me be a repairer of the breach. God is going to help me to build the old waste places. He's going to help me to raise up the foundations of many generations. He's going to help me. I'm going to tell you something. I hate the fact that our generation don't have any backbone about God's Word. I love our generation. I love being a part of them. But it's our fault. Us kids that grew up in the 60s and 70s, it's our fault because we rebelled against everything that we knew was right. Didn't we? We did. It was our fault that everybody decided to throw out the old and get the new. It's our fault. Now it's our time to say, I'm through with that. 
I'm going to help my youngins. I'm going to help my grand youngins. I'm going to help my family. I'm going to help my, the strangers around me. They're going to see that God's word is true and I'm going to live by it and I'm going to teach them the right way too. And if I'm not successful, let me be, Lord. Let me be. Let me make a difference. Let me be a restorer of the past to dwell in. Forgive me for going along with the devil and his ways. Forgive me for giving up on his holy word. I will not do that anymore. I will be what God wants me to be. I will stand for right. I will not follow Hollywood. I will not follow all the intellectuals that said this word is flawed. They were liars. And they were ignorant. And I'm not listening to them anymore. Hallelujah. God has a job for us grannies and grandpas to do. And it's to stand up to our laureates and our lanies and our bills and teach them what is right. And when the devil tries to teach them another way, we'll stand up and pray for them and seek God for them that God will give them the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost. God has a Holy Spirit. Jesus has a Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost has a Holy Spirit. But the Holy Ghost is known by that name. And they have presumed to take it out of God's Word. I don't like it. It's wrong. And I say, there's a path to dwell in. And that's not it. You go around saying the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. There's no power in that. You start talking about the Holy Ghost and you'll feel the fear in it. You'll feel the anointing in it. You'll feel the desire in it that God has for you to have that power in your life. I'm sorry if some of you come in after all this has happened to the Word of God and to the church. I'm sorry if that's all you know. It may be all you know is to call the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. You may not know any better, but I'm trying to tell you God is going to raise up a people, hallelujah, that are going to restore those past as well in. And when you see it and when you hear it, you go that way. Don't stay in that ignorance. I am not ignorant. I know what God tells us in His Word. And it is to stand for the truth. Because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth. And He will show you. He will say, this is the path. Walk in it. This is the way. Go that way. You will recognize His voice. And you will go that way. God loves us. He's not wanting us to be part of that crowd that does not love the truth. He said that about them. He said they don't love the truth. And because of that, He will send a strong spirit of delusion that they'll believe a lie and be damned. Boy. Because they do not love the truth. They would not receive a love of the truth. Oh. Hallelujah. Sister Linda. That's some strong words you're using. Yes. They have to be said. In order for you to get back on the right path. women that wear jeans. Do you want to be that? Do you want to be a good Christian woman that wears jeans? Is that what you want? Go ahead. But 
I'm going to tell you it's not pleasing to the Lord. You better lay them down. You better get yourself back in the right way. You look back at your granny and you'll see what she was doing. If you had a good granny, you know what she was doing. And you know what she'd say about a lot of the things that you're doing right now. She wouldn't have a part of it. God wants us, hallelujah, to come the right way. Hallelujah. Go ahead and sing, sister.
There's joy in doing the things just like He wants you to do. Hallelujah. You'll feel that watered garden experience. Just go ahead with that joyful turning toward Him. Turn. Turn toward Him. Lord, let me be what you want me to be. If it's not pleasing in your sight, let me lay it down, God. If it's not pleasing in your sight that I'm not doing it, let me pick it up, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to do your will. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. We got one, two children away. Come on. Come on, Imani. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, baby. Still waiting. Love each other. Love each other. Amen. See y'all Wednesday night. God bless you. Mm -hmm.